morning, we are going to continue our, ser um, our series on boldness in boom and bust. So far this month, we've taken a look at David and Abraham with Pastor Brian. And today, we're going to take a look at a very bold young woman in the Bible. Please pray with me to hear God's word. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for using us in your ministry. Thank you for guiding us thus far and granting us your grace. Even now, Lord, you know the purpose for which we have come to you. Today, Lord, fill me with your grace and power so that I can preach your word boldly. I, on my own, in an empty vessel, let your Holy Spirit take full control over me and let you speak, not me. You know the needs of the people that are listening, Lord. Thank you for guiding us with your special grace and power and strength, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. About nine years ago, soon after we moved to Casper, my family and I started attending this church. One Sunday morning, I found an insert that advertised the youth director. Now, in Cheyenne, I had been the, youth, uh, the children's ministry and um, Christian education director for about five years before I, we had moved here, but I had absolutely no experience working with teenagers. Despite my fear of working with teenagers, I kept feeling this push to apply for the job, so I did. I couldn't believe it when Pastor Margaret Gillikin called me for an interview. I will never forget the day that I walked into that interview with her and about eight SPR members. The first question she asked me was, tell us why did you apply for this job opening? My first thought was, oh no, what have I got myself into? So I took a deep breath and I answered. I have absolutely no idea. I'm terrified of teenagers. I know nothing about teaching them, much less the curriculum to use with them. I really don't know why I'm here, except that God told me to apply. The room immediately went to that uncomfortable silence. Most of them looked down. And Pastor Margaret, after what seemed to be an eternity, says, well then, Let's continue with this interview and see what else God wants you to tell us. About a week later, Pastor Margaret called to offer me the position of the nursery supervisor, not what I had applied for. Her words to me were, we really don't know where to put you, and we don't think that this is the right position for you, but we want you on staff. One year later, I was moved to Christian education when our friend Edie moved to Denver. Three years later, Pastor Steve came to me and says, we want you to work with the youth. And Pastor Brian will be your mentor. And I shook my head at him and I looked at him and I said, you obviously did not hear about my interview. <laughs> and he informed me that he had and that God wants me to work with the youth. Well, I'm now in my sixth year of working with the youth and I absolutely love my teenagers. Being bold, friends, is scary. Being bold is necessary. And being bold, I have learned, takes us where God wants us to be. So let's go back into our scripture today. I find it really interesting that God went to a little town of Nazareth, a town that has kind of a bad reputation, and he went to a humble cottage and tapped a girl probably a young teenager, on the shoulder and says, I want you to be the mother of Jesus. Let's watch this clip from Jesus of Nazareth.
are you? Who are you? Maiden of the Lord, may it be done unto me according to your word. Church, let me start out by saying many times we have the wrong view of the characters that we read about in the Bible. Somehow we are of the opinion that the people we read about are superhuman, that somehow they have these extraordinary powers that none of us could ever obtain. Church, let me tell you one fact. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. We need to understand that before Gabriel came to Mary, she wasn't anything spectacular. She was a young Jewish girl living in a small Jewish town. From all outward appearance, she was just like any other young girl in this town. I'm sure Mary would have been just perfectly happy to be a normal Jewish girl living a normal Jewish life. She had the same dreams as any other girl. Fall in love, settle down, get married, have a family. But God steps in and he changes everything. And then the angel Gabriel shows up and gives her this amazing announcement. Mary responds with wonder at God's wisdom. The Bible says that Gabriel says to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary was amazed at what Gabriel said to her, and she was thinking, favored one, me? I'm not anyone special. Surely he's not talking to me. I'm just an ordinary girl from an ordinary town. Did you know that God tells us these two same statements that he told Mary? The two statements that we are his favored ones, that the Lord is with us all the time. Aren't you amazed by that? That God would choose you. He would choose me to be a part of his family. I'm in wonder by that wisdom. And his promise that he'll never leave us or forsake us. That he's always, no matter what the event is or what the circumstance is, that he's here. Friends, that is good news. That is awesome. Mary was so perplexed by God's plan that she asked the question, how can this be, Lord? I'm still a virgin. It's a simple enough question, isn't it? How can I have a child if I have never had sex? No one has had a child that way. To her, it was confusing. To us, it would be confusing. But Gabriel explains it to her. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. And then he adds, for nothing is impossible with God. Gabriel reminds her that nothing is impossible with God. The same is true today, friends, that nothing is impossible with God. Whenever we sense God's call, we need to remind ourselves that we can rely on God's power. God will never call us to do what he doesn't think we can do. If we are willing to be used by God, 
then we have to trust in him fully. We ask, how can we be? How can this be? And God answers, because I am God and you're not. Let me say this again, church, for nothing is impossible with God. But here's a startling fact. God often works in the ways that we can never imagine. The Bible says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. It is not for us to figure things out, church. It's for us simply to trust in God. Mary was perplexed by God's plan, but Mary was bold and submitted to God's plan. Look at what happens in verse 38. Mary says, Behold the bond slave of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. She had heard the, the, the call of God. She had listened to God's plan. She was told of God's power. Her response, she submitted to God's sovereignty. Did you know that when Mary said, behold the bond slave of the Lord, she didn't know what Joseph's reaction was gonna be. Did you know that Mary said, may it be done according to your word? She didn't know what her community's response was gonna be. She did not know what the people were gonna say about her. She didn't know how the people were going to treat her. But she submitted herself anyways. She could have come up with all kinds of excuses, but she didn't. She could have said, I don't want anything to do with this, Lord. Pick somebody else. But she didn't. What she did was submit to God's sovereignty. And if you're willing to do that, you've got to trust in the Lord. Mary showed us that by her example of what it means to trust his sovereignty. As I studied this week and reflected, I believe that I found part of why God might have chose Mary. It was because of what Mary already had and because who God knew that Mary was going to become. Mary had the proper perspective. For example, when Gabriel tapped her on the shoulders that day, Mary was greatly troubled. She was in no doubt on edge, having an angel of the Lord speak to her. And the message that Gabriel brought to her was very troubling. After all, she was engaged at the time to Joseph, and engagements at that day were much more serious than they are now. It's almost like a marriage. For instance, an engaged woman could not be divorced without a bill of, sa a bill of divorcement. If, sus if suspected of unfaithfulness, she could have been stoned to death. If her fiance died during the engagement, she would be considered a widow, and her child that would be born during the engagement would be considered illegitimate. Therefore, as this unique pregnancy became known to Mary, remember, just a young teenage girl, she faced many troubling possibilities. Rejection by Joseph, the task of raising a child by herself, in a culture that was already hostile to women. In addition, she jeopardized her reputation in Nazareth. Should her neighbors find out, she even risked her life. All of this troubled Mary. Not to mention the fact that she felt maybe insecure, insecure unworthy, insufficient to be the mother of the Son of God. That's a really big job. Again, Mary could have said, Lord, I'm just a girl. I'm not ready to be a mother. I'm not wealthy. I'm not educated. I'm not worthy of this. Pick someone else. She may have been confused and afraid. How am I going to have this baby without a husband? The physical impossibilities of this. But don't you just love Gabriel's answer? This is God's work. In you, Mary, nothing is impossible with God. Church, nothing is impossible with God. It is possible for a virgin to have a birth. It is possible 
for the Savior to come to the house of David. It is possible for the world to find forgiveness and grace. With God, it is possible. When was the last time that you trusted God enough to be bold? When was the last time that you felt that tug at your heart to help someone in need? Or did you do it? And did you do it with boldness? When was the last time your soul yearned for you to sing or speak praises in public? Did you sing, great is thy faithfulness? When was the last time you were bold and put your reputation, your embarrassments, your comfort zone, your money on the line for God? Why is it that we worry so much what our neighbors are gonna think and what they're gonna say and forget about what God thinks and says? When Mary heard the news, she didn't think about what her neighbors had to say, and I imagine they probably had plenty to say and they probably were still talking years later. But Mary's trust was such a shock to the man that she was engaged to that he considered breaking the engagement. But Mary didn't consider that. She followed what God was calling her to do. Mary didn't hang her head down low. She didn't wallow in her worries of circumstance. She didn't act in fear of what Joseph was gonna think. Somehow, Mary trusted God. God was gonna take care of those matters. And even more important, she believed that whatever God said was gonna happen was going to happen. His work would be done. She didn't have a complete understanding of this, and I'm sure she had more than a few questions. I know I would have. She spoke of God's will as the most important thing in her life. No doubt she had to contend with nosy neighbors, who wanted to know why and how she got pregnant when she wasn't even married. No doubt she had to deal with those who wanted to bring her disgrace and humiliation. No doubt Joseph's initial feelings of shame and disgrace concerned her. This was the man she loved. No doubt her trust in God made her give up her reputation and her comfort zone for God. Isn't it interesting, though, that all those stories are forgotten? They're not even part of recorded history. We don't remember that loss of reputation or social embarrassment. What we do remember is a young woman who was given everything by God. The reputation that she has as Jesus' mother, that's what we remember. That's what was important. God knew who she could be. She did trust in God, and with all that kind of faith that accepts God's word for what it is, Mary lived to see miracles. Mary was willing, even though she didn't fully understand what was happening. She believed in God himself would accomplish her work. She counted her circumstance as nothing. She counted God for everything. Today, God still sends these messages to our ears alone that can be both disturbing and wonderful at the same time, occurring right in the middle of our plans. Today, God still calls us at unexpected times to accomplish his works in the world. His messages have a way of flipping our worlds upside down. And like Mary, we may get caught a little bit off guard, stunned with the news at first, but then gratitude sets in. What may appear for moments to be our whole world being undone turns out to be the greatest blessings we've ever experienced. But in order to experience those blessings, we must trust first. Mary had the right perspective. She knew who God was, the Almighty Lord, and she knew who she was, his servant. Mary was God's servant, and she knew nothing was impossible with God. And if the Lord Almighty wanted to give her the task of raising his son, then she had to accept it. She had no other choice. God the Father looked upon Mary with favor because she had the proper perspective. She viewed herself first and foremost as a servant of God. We all want God to give us the comfortable, but from time to time, God is going to call us through times of crisis 
and discomfort to reach his goal and his plan. Have you noticed that in your Christian life, that when you're uncomfortable at work or in your family life, that all of a sudden you're being pushed outside your comfort zone and things work out just perfect? When God calls you to do great for him, it is usually involving taking steps of faith. It involves trusting God for the end result. And even though we may have tons of answers and we don't know how things are going to work out, we trust. So today, church, I encourage you to be bold. Step out on faith to follow where you're being called. Be bold. Do not worry about what your neighbors think or how they will judge you. Be bold because the only one who matters is on your side. And be bold because nothing is impossible with God. Amen.